by the design, you can see that it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a somewhat simple design, uh, but there's a lot behind it. Uh, you know, it has a very somewhat simple but consistent layout, which is important. Uh, it has large default text, and uh, it, of course it's screen reader accessible. It, has, uh, it was written from the ground up uh, with web standards uh, and progressive enhancement to make it a robust application, which we'll talk a little bit more about. And um, it just can be used on such a wide variety of technologies and a wide variety of people. That's, why, that's what makes it so um, ro robust and um, inclusive and accessible is like um, you're not required to have a certain, you know, um, internet connection speed or a certain browser. It, it works with low band. It works uh, on IE8. It works even without JavaScript. It works in a text-only browser even. I've also added uh, language support, so the interface is even available in five different languages. And it offers uh, two different color themes. So this is, the default theme is this, you know, the light theme, and there's also an inverse, like, dark theme. For people who might have vision problems and just prefer the dark theme or other people that just like it. Uh, this screen here just gives an example of focus, the visual focus indicator. So you always want to make sure on a, a website that um, the user knows where the keyboard focus is and make that obvious. And also for people with low vision, uh, you know, increasing or the text size and zooming in is extremely important. So um, this, this slide here shows uh, Easy Chirp zoom, zoomed in at 200% uh, and, you know, doesn't break the layout or anything. Um, it works really well. Try it, um, try it after this session's over. It'll open up Easy Chirp on a browser and just zoom in on it super high and see how far you can go. And you, I, I think you'll be impressed by, by the support there. Let's see. And because it's so uh, robust and everything that, you know, it's, well, here's a, the next slide, the picture of the inverse theme, the dark theme I was talking about. And this is in Spanish. And this is on an iPad. I really like, um, on tablet, Easy Trip works really well. The form factor is excellent on tablets. Uh, so here's a, a nice example of, of combining different preferences and, uh, and showing the flexibility of the, the application. Okay, so uh, we know Easy Chirp is accessible. It's, I think it's pretty easy to use. And, uh, you know, what happened, Twitter keeps adding features, and one of the features they added was, um, you know, being able to uh, attach an image to a tweet. Now, the problem with that, as you may guess, is like if you, an attach, if you attach an image, you need alternative text uh, to make that accessible. Uh, so, this screen here is a screenshot of my blog, a web page, uh, a post from my blog, WebAx, that Krista mentioned at the beginning. And it's from uh, May of 2014, a little over a year ago, where I announced uh, not only support in EasyChirp to include an image on Twitter, but to also add alt text. And not just, you could add a um, short, like title alternative text, and also a long text version. So this screen shows the portion of the Easy Chirp interface where you can actually do that. If you go to write a tweet, you could open this section up, this add image section. You select the image from your device. You enter a short description. And then optionally, um, preferably, you enter a long description, so more of the details of that image. And there's also a some help provided if needed, and just click the button to upload image, and the link to that accessible image will be automatically inserted into the draft of your tweet. So, going back to our story of this photo, the two women on the tandem bike, uh, this is Marcy Sutton in the foreground. She is a um, 
pretty well-known web developer now, uh, especially in the last year or two, she's really gotten into accessibility. And um, I'm, <laughs> I just think this picture is awesome. So here's the photo we saw at the beginning. And this is of the tweet shown on the inter Easy Chirp interface. And here's her tweet, uh, CSUN 15, the conference, uh, tandem biking was the coolest Saturday next year. And the image, and if you click the link to that that's on the tweet, you'll open up a web page hosted by Easy Chirp um, that anybody can view. You don't have to be logged into Easy Chirp to view this page. Uh, and it has the the title or you know the short description at the top, uh, and then the image, and then the long descript description is also uh, there on the page. Simple as that. Now I talked about Easy Chirp and uh, you know just making the interface accessible to any kind of user or technology, assistive technology, and I think it does a really great job of that. Here's a good example. Here's the exact, this, this slide um, shows the exact same tweet as the last slide. The big difference, <laughs> as you can see, uh, is this slide uh, shows the tweet in a text-only browser. So you can't see the image, you don't have the JavaScript, you don't have the CSS, but it still works. And um, it's kind of, in a way, it kind of, you know, um, not only this shows you how a text-only browser would render this tweet, but also similar to screen readers. So they would read, you know, tandem bike riding at CSUN. Um, that's actually the heading. And then the same text again is the alt text for the image. And then there's a, the long description for the image as well. So that's a great feature of EasyChirp. Um, I do wish it was used a little more, so feel free to try it out. I, I'm always adding enhancements. Uh, well, not always, as much as I could get to it. Uh, doing tweaks and once in a while adding a feature or enhancing um, the application, continued maintenance. Uh, one example is um, the tweet shown on this, on this slide here. Uh, is the new quote tweet feature by Twitter. So they, they kind of changed the way um, you do a quote tweet. So you could re refer to somebody else's tweet and write a comment about it. Uh, so that was recently changed. And so um, even more recently, I, I uh, added that, uh, made that adjustment, made that change in the Easy Chirp interface. So like accessibility, there's always something to improve and to, to learn and to work on. Uh, so takeaways here that you know Twitter is a very powerful medium, and that Easy Chirp, as I, I think I successfully showed, is very uh, a robust and accessible application. It can be used on all different kinds of technologies, uh, new technologies, old technologies, assistive technologies, slow technologies, and you could use Easy Chirp to easily tweak an accessible image. So. You know, if if you are uh, if you're tweeting an image, um, you know that images do help enhance tweets. Uh, some people don't like it or not. That's just the, the fact of the matter. So um, now you are able to add your alternative text uh, to an image that's shown on that that web page. Um, so uh, I suggest you you give it a go after this uh, session. So on Twitter, uh, this Easy Chirp is the handle. EasyChirp.com is the website. Uh, WebAx is the handle uh, on Twitter for my, my blog about web accessibility. And WebAx.org is the website. And my personal Twitter account is Dennis L. OK, that is the end. So um, I guess I'm ready for questions. All right. Thanks, Dennis, for um, sharing a little bit about Easy Chirp. Everybody, just a reminder, you can enter any questions you have in the chat pod. 
um, or email at info at pwords.org. And just to kick us off, I'm going to start with a question that I had. Um, you know, we work a lot with developers and, um, you know, talking about accessibility, and I just want to know, how did you personally become involved with accessibility as your career path, and what advice do you have for others who might be interested in this field? Uh, well, personally, um, <laughs> I got started in 2001. Uh, I was doing, I was working as a developer for web-based training, developing uh, web-based training sites. For, uh, for a company in Orlando, Florida, and they did a lot of government contracts. And that was right around the time when um, Section 508 became enacted. Uh, so that was my job to learn like, what that was all about, and I became very interested in it. It was um, you know, challenging and very valuable to learn and to know, and I really got interested in how, how much crossover there is between accessibility, web standards, and usability. And the more you learn about it, the, the more you learn how much crossover there is. So um, I found that very interesting, and I've been doing that ever since. Uh, just some, some, some suggestions as, uh, as far as, <laughs> well, on the web-based side, it's good to um, you know, start to learn the basics. Uh, really know HTML well, and that will help you learn uh, ARIA, which is, um, which is more markup that helps uh, assistive technologies. And progressive enhancement, that's kind of a coding technique uh, that's really, really important. So to start with the basic content and code that way and then, um, and then later add on CSS and the JavaScript for uh, the design and interaction and just build upon the basics. All right, and we have a great question from one of our participants. There, if we were going to use EasyTrip as a company, do we have to set up a separate account? How would you do that? And then how would we tweet jobs using EasyTrip? Well, it works like any other third-party Twitter client. So um, no matter what, you have to create an account on Twitter.com. That's a must. Uh, but once you have a Twitter account, uh, you could log into EasyChirp just like any other uh, third-party site. So there's a button on the home page that just says sign in. It'll take you to twitter.com to, um, to authorize so you can authenticate and OK this application. And you just hit OK and it returns you, and you um, back to EasyChirp and you'll land um, in, the, in that timeline page in the main interface. All right, great. So you just use your existing Twitter account, go to EasyTrip, log in with that, and it'll just take you back to yeah. the EasyTrip interface. Okay, yeah. and so then how would you, what would be a good way to use EasyTrip to tweet out job opportunities? Um, <laughs> well, the, um, the recommended, well, most pages have the right tweet. Um, a big button at the top, so you just open that up and you can start uh, drafting your tweet, writing your tweet. So it's a good idea, um, you know, to to write um, just a, a brief, the, a brief title or description of the job, um, in a URL, of course, to um, to the job posting, uh, and then hashtags. You know, don't overdo hashtags, but you might want to do. Um, Pound sign jobs is a good one, and then um, you know if it's accessibility related, you want to add um, the hash a11y is uh, a very common, well-known hashtag within the accessibility community. Uh, and then of course, if you want to add an image, uh, you know EasyChirp will give you the option to to enter a description of that image to make sure that um, that tweet is accessible. Some other guidelines are, you know, not to use too much jargon in your tweet um, in case that, you know, for people with uh, English as a second language or cognitive disabilities or if it needs to be translated. Great. So another question about how EasyChirp works. Is it possible to schedule tweets in advance to go out on specific dates and times using EasyChirp? Sorry, no. <laughs> 
That's um, a great question. I wish it had that ability, but um, it does not. It's on the list for long term. Uh, another thing on the list for long term is like multi using multiple accounts. So once you log in, you're logged in with that account. Um, if you want to use multiple accounts, you have to log in with different in different browsers at the same time. That's that's usually what I do. Those are the two big features that I um, plan to do in the future, uh, but but that's not available right now. Sorry. Great. Well, we'll look for it in 3.0 or 4.0 or beyond. Right. Right. All right. Just another question. Um, what would you do? You have an easy trip success story that you could share with us. Success story. Um, <laughs> Oh, well, something fun that pops into mind is I was at a conference and the Wi-Fi really wasn't working and somebody tethered to the internet from his computer to his uh, mobile phone, but that connection wasn't very good either. But the person was able, because EasyChirp works on, is really light code, it works on low band pretty well, uh, the person was able to uh, use EasyChirp on their laptop, uh, even with the low band connection at a conference. So that, that was pretty interesting. Um, there are, you know, blind users, screen reader users that use EasyChirp. A lot of them uh, prefer uh, desktop clients. They, um, the, it's the desktop clients such as Chicken Nugget and the Cube. Uh, those work a little faster with screen readers, um, but if, in case there's a problem with those desktop applications, once in a while, uh, you know, they might the apps might not be working for some reason. They could always use EasyChirp. Um, so, let's see. If you wanna if you wanna um, see more what users say about EasyChirp, you can go to um, Easy the favorite tweets. If you go to the EasyChirp uh, account on Twitter and you look at the favorites, uh, you could read more about what uh, folks are saying about Easy Term. All right, great. Well, I think we have time for one more question. It looks like one. Oh, here we go. Can you use voice recognition software to tweet? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, like like Dragon, naturally speaking, or something. Yes, it works well with that. Um, just because of, you know the way the, it's coded with again with web standards and it's accessible, things are um, labeled appropriately, and uh, elements are what they should be. Like a button are conveyed as buttons, and links are conveyed as links. Uh, you know through the browser into assistive technology. So um, yes, it does work well with that. All right, great. Well, I think that that's all the time we have for today. Um, thank you so much, Dennis, for joining us and taking time out of your work day to talk about this project. Um, I'm actually going to toss in one more question because I think it'll be fairly easy to answer. Um, okay. Will there be a mobile app down the road? <laughs> I've been asked that as well before. Uh, n well, no, I haven't. I had plans to do a Firefox OS app. Because that's you know you know is is uh, Firefox is you know all for the open web and it's free and all that. Uh, so there are long-term plans to do that, but um, other than that, no. All there, right, um, great. Well, now I'm actually going to let us wrap up. That we're hitting 2:30. Um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Please be sure to join next month's P Talk on Tuesday, August 18th. Note that we've had to make a date change from Thursday to Tuesday for next month's event. Um, the August talk is going to feature Adam Streets, who will be speaking about getting hired, an accessible platform for job seekers with disabilities to search for jobs, and also the surveys the company has conducted with job seekers about online job applications. You can find that registration link on Twitter today at PeteWorks, or look for an email from Pete in the coming weeks with registration information. Once again, I want to give a special thanks to Dennis for talking to us today and for all of you who took the time to join us. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.
Thanks, Krista and everybody. Thanks for dialing in. All right. Bye-bye.